So prior to last year, the idea of a coma was something that I'd only really seen in movies and TV shows and that sort of thing. And it didn't really hit home for me until uh, late February or early March, um, shortly after uh, my initial hospitalization. So those of you that are close to me will know um, that I was hospitalized in late February last year and um, and things just got progressively worse for for a few months. So I was hospitalized on February 23rd of last year um, and about a week later uh, my lungs were, were getting progressively worse and uh, my, my oxygen saturation or my OSAT um, was, was kind of falling continually and the doctor felt that it was in my best interest uh, for them to put me in a medically induced coma, put me in what's called the prone position where I'm actually laying on my stomach instead of on my back um, to kind of give my, my lungs a bit of a break um, from having to work quite as hard as they would uh, just laying in bed uh, normally. Initially, the, the conversation that we had with the doctor um, was that I would be in a coma for three or four days um, it, just to give my lungs a bit of a break and that they would bring me out of it at that point and, and we would go from there to kind of see how things had progressed. Um, once we actually reached that three or four day mark, um, I had actually gotten worse. My lungs had, had gotten weaker and had basically given up um, during that, that, that few day process of while I was in the prone position. So three or four days passed and they decided it would be, uh, again, in my best interest to keep me in that prone position, or to keep me in a coma anyway, uh, for a few more days and then a few more days and then a few days more after that. Um, and what started out as um, just being in a coma for three or four days turned into about three and a half weeks um, of, that, of the first of actually what, what turned out to be four medically induced comas for me in 2016. So the problem with being in a coma, and it's more specifically in my case anyway, a medically induced coma is that uh, your brain doesn't ever really shut off and get REM sleep the way it does when you're sleeping naturally. And to go the three and a half weeks um, that I was I was in a coma without any REM sleep actually caused me to, when, when they brought me out of the coma, to, to have a condition called ICU delirium. ICU, of course, being intensive care unit. Um, and the delirium means I had gone basically batshit crazy. Um, just full on Looney Tunes, was, was having a hard time coping with reality. Um, when I first came out, luckily Rachel was there um, and she had kind of explained to me that it hadn't been three days, it had been closer to three weeks. And um, in, in the delirium, I guess, um, I was convinced that it was like 2014 again instead of 2016. Um, so there was there was quite a bit of, of confusion and um, just inability to kind of deal with what was going on from, from my mental state. And, and one of the things um, that looking back on it now is kind of funny is that um, the, the, the room that I was in when I came out of the coma, um, the, the, the help staff, the cleaning staff, who, whoever it was, did this thing with uh, like washcloths where they folded them up into like origami rabbits and they were cute and they just kind of sat on the on the table next to you um, so if you needed a washcloth it was there but it wasn't just a regular old washcloth it was folded to, to be this cute little bunny problem is that um, I was convinced that it was an evil rabbit that was like hopping around my room um, it wasn't it wasn't a washcloth rabbit. It was, it was a real rabbit hopping around my room, and um, it was kind of scary. Um, like I said, I was, I was a bit delirious, but I, I still remember certain things about it, or about the time that I was in in this delirious state, and I, I still very vividly remember what the rabbit looked like, and I remember that it wasn't, it wasn't a washcloth, and it wasn't staying still. And, and I kind of decided several days or, or even maybe a couple of weeks later that, that I wanted to, to remember that, um, that I, I wanted to remember that process of coming out of the coma 
and some of the delirium that went with it and some of the delusions that I had coming coming out of the delirium. So basically, um, once, once I kind of got my head mostly straightened back out, I decided at that point that I was going to get a white rabbit tattooed on me somewhere. I didn't know what it was going to look like. I didn't know where it was going to go. I didn't know anything other than I wanted it, a rabbit tattooed on me uh, just to kind of help commemorate uh, the, the initial the initial crazy that happened. So fast forward about 11 months. Um, at this point, I've been home for, for just over six months. Um, I'm pretty much back on my feet. And Rachel had recently had some, some tattoo work done um, by, by a guy named Joe Othon, who works down at Empire Tattoo, at least as, at the time of recording this video. Um, and and he's, a, he's a great guy, he does great work. Uh, Rachel told me that you know he was a light touch and so I decided that Joe was going to be my guy. So Rachel got her work done and that very same day um, I talked to Joe and, and we actually scheduled my tattoo uh, for January 20th which was actually Rachel's birthday. Um, so, so we spent half the day hanging out getting my tattoo on her birthday so, uh, so thanks for that. <laughs> um, but anyway um, Rachel, Rachel and I uh, worked together uh, recording the process of me getting the tattoo and, and I'd actually like to share that with you now um, just to kind of show you what it was like kind of start to finish where uh, we actually started recording right after he put the stencil on my arm um, and then uh, then we just kind of went from there and we kind of took turns recording. So, so let's take a look at that. <laughs> This is the cutie who's going to pop my husband's cherry. <laughs> <laughs> the very talented Joe Othan. Yeah. Othan? Othan? Othan. Othan. Just doing God's work. Better than you thought? Worse than you thought? Oh, I didn't know like I'm in any preconceived notions or anything. Really? Yeah. Everybody's experience is going to be different. And like, I'm able to just completely disconnect. I know, you're kind of freaky like that. So here we are a couple of days later. Today is actually January 22nd. And uh, here you can you can still see it on my arm. Um, 
and and it's it's healing up very nicely. Um, the, the first couple of days it was tender and itchy and and all of the stuff you would expect uh, a tattoo to do. Um, this was my first tattoo, so I didn't really know what to expect going in, but I tried to keep an open mind. And I think actually going in and watching somebody else, uh, in this case, watching Rachel get her tattoo, um, made it made it easier for me to go in with an open mind um, and, and made the, the process um, less, less nerve wracking going in. Um, so, um, so anyway, yeah, that's, that's what it was like for me to get, uh, to get my first tattoo. Um, I don't know that I should have got my first tattoo on the inside of my forearm. It was fairly tender. Uh, some places more tender than others. Um, but, but overall the process was actually, was actually pretty great. Um, they, they asked me both, uh, both Joe and Rachel asked if I was, uh, if I was ready for my next tattoo yet. And I'm sure at some point I will get another tattoo. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to have Joe do that one as well. Um, but I don't know what, I don't know when, I don't know where. Um, but, uh, but I am pretty excited that I got it to commemorate, um, kind of what I went through last year medically. Um, and I'll always have that, that to reference back that I made it through probably the, the, the most terrible thing I've ever gone through up mm -hmm. to this point. Hopefully the worst thing I'll ever go through. Um, and I'm alive and I made it through and maintain most of my sanity, at least after the fact. So, um, so there it is. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, uh, do me a favor, uh, give the video a thumbs up, share the video on, on your favorite social media, um, and leave your comments below, uh, as far as what you, what you think you'd like to get for your first tattoo if you don't have any. Uh, tell me about your first tattoo experience. Tell me what you want to get for your next tattoo. Um, and I look forward to, to, to chatting with you guys in the comment section down below. Um, you can also reach out to me on social media. Um, I'll have all of those links to, to my Facebook, my Twitter, my, my Instagram. All that stuff will be down there as well. And I really look forward to, uh, to chatting with you guys both uh, in social media, in the comments, and all that sort of stuff. So uh, again, thanks for watching. Um, thanks for your continued support. And uh, I look forward to talking to you guys in the next one.